Bugsy, you ready for another raw meal? Oh, we're making a, a basil pesto. And basically, this is something, again, you don't have to be a raw foodist to make pesto. There's a few things that are a little different with raw version. For instance, there's no cheese in it. A lot of times uh, people would use pine nuts, but I'm gonna be using walnuts. I like the omega-3s in the walnuts, and this is raw walnuts, raw organic walnuts, and they've been soaked to get rid of the enzyme inhibitors in them. And if you're a raw foodist, you understand what I'm talking about. A little bit more than two cups of fresh organic basil. And what I do is I destem it, and then rinse it in like a big bowl of water. Also, I used one lemon, and I've already squeezed it through, you know, a press. So here's the juice of one lemon, and about but two garlic cloves. And what I like to do, not to make the garlic so intense since it is raw, do it through a garlic press, and then put it, let it marinate a bit in olive oil, and that seems to take a little of the harshness away of the garlic. So that's just my personal preference too. But a nice tip, you know. But you made that. Out. I did make this. That's I just this. a jar I you're just using. Made it. They're right. This is actually this it. is an old jar. Celtic sea salt and very little bit of salt because I'm going to be adding other things to it. Extra virgin olive oil organic <coughs> too will be in this recipe, about a quarter cup. So this is going to just start off as a basic pesto and you could just do this alone. And then later I'm going to add some other things to it that makes it like my twist on pesto and making it even more <coughs> nutritious and like what I would like to consider a party pesto. Okay, so let me start with putting it all together. It's just really easy. I think this is probably one of the easiest things you can make. I'm putting the basil into the food processor. This is about two cups. About a quarter cup of olive oil goes in with it. We just are finishing off the bottle. Pre-soaked, raw, organic walnuts. The juice of one lemon. equivalent of about two garlic cloves goes in. I'm doing one quarter teaspoon of salt because I'm having other salty things in here. If you're just doing a straight pesto you might want to add like another eighth on top of this quarter but since I'm adding olives later and the abushi uh, plum which is also very salty I'm not doing too much sea salt. Again to taste if you feel like you need to add more go for it. But right now I'm just starting off with a small amount. I could always add. It's easier to add than to take it out, you know? So start conservative. Okay. Pretty simple stuff, right? Okay. And that's the pesto. How simple is that? Look how gorgeous. Okay, what you might want to do too, like take a look at it. You might like, look, here's a leaf. Scrape it down and do pulsate it a little bit more. want to you could just stop right there and be done uh, that's that's pesto that's that easy but now I want to add a few more interesting ingredients to it to make it more special and kind of jazz it up a bit and one of the things that I just found out about and I'm sure I'm not even pronouncing it right and uh, please bear with me and my ignorance on it boshi adds an interesting flavor to it it think of it more like an olive like a salty olive than something sweet really it has a long history in Japan if you google it find out something like samurai warriors used to eat it before they go into battle like things like crazy stuff and because um has the highest level of citric acid of any fruit okay and this is where it's key which helps break down lactic acid and cleanse the body it's also extremely good for fighting fatigue which will be great for a party and slowing down the dreaded aging process. And I'm gonna put about three of these into the pesto and blend it up. But I just think that's kind of a fun, kind of cool thing to add to something, you know, something making it more special than a traditional, just plain old pesto. pesto. And it will add an interesting flavor too. Again, on the salty side, that's why I was pretty conservative on the salt. Yeah, I'm putting the three of them have gone in. And the pits are kind of fun to suck on too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let me try one. Mm. I don't think I'm going to like it. Let me you try one. You will not like this. Is it like an olive? It's very salty. Yes, I'll it's tell an you. Extremely salty olive. Oh, God. What the hell? Oh, that it? is really salty. Yeah, but it'll be okay when it's part of that, but well, alone. It's be blended with a lot of other things. Blending it up. Okay, with the oh. plum.
put it into a larger mixing bowl. Okay, I got a spoon and I'm going to taste this. Okay. Mmm, very good. Pretty amazing, right? Can yeah. you taste the plum in it? Is uh, no, it an unusual no. Flavor? It's unusual, but it's not like when I tasted the plum alone. No, no, it, it now blends yeah, with it all. Yeah, now it's, it's not. I took a, a jar already of Kalamata olives and I cut them up. So this was just already pre cut olives. Again, this is going to add even more saltiness but a different kind of saltiness and which will be nice because it's all going with zucchini which is very mild so even though these are intense flavors it'll kind of mellow it with what it's going to be paired with. And also the olives and the tomatoes are the party part of this pesto. <laughs> so here's my tomatoes and I'm putting that, I just sliced them in half. So I mix it all up and I'm going to just let it kind of marinate in the fridge for a while. So we're going to run some errands and come back. Uh, olive oil. we got to get olive get oil. Olive oil. But we're going to uh, come back and use the spiruli and make up some noodles with the zucchinis, which is also kind of a fun thing to add to this. We took a break. And we're going to get olive oil at the health food store. And what happened to the pesto? Where is it? In the fridge. Okay. So we're back, we picked up our olive oil. Pasta, raw pasta. Please look like they're gonna Okay, so what I've done is I've peeled them and then split them in half. This is a zucchini right through the center. And then you just split it. And then you're gonna end up with a little pasta. So here's the spaghetti coming out. The zucchini spaghetti. Zucchini spaghetti is coming out. This is music to make uh, Zucchini pasta by. by. Zucchini pasta by. I don't know. I'm not sure about this music. It's a little too classical for something too so. Too clockwork orangey. See, now that's the music to be making this spaghetti, spiruli, zucchini by. Spiruli music. Because it's for a party, so you don't want to have these really long pieces. And I'm just taking a scissor, which is clean, and this is dedicated scissor just for kitchen stuff, just like this. Just, you know. Don't use your hair cutting scissor. And now it goes in the fridge, and when we come back from Lex's party, we'll put the two together before we go to Hillary's party. We're very social today. Yeah. Now we're going to go see Lex's birthday party. Band. Band. Yeah. All you love is loving. All your kisses just kissing. Well, we like saw the band, now we're going uh, to pick up the food, mix head it out. together. And head out to Hill. Head out to a uh, birthday party where we're going to bring the raw pasta and pesto. Oh boy. What a night. So basically, this is the last stop now. We're going to put the pesto together. Yeah. Come on, probably mix it in a little at a time. And actually, I'm thinking it feels a little dry. Maybe. The oil we ran out for before. Yeah. So I'm just going to pour a little oil in here just to give it a little bit more lubrication. Lubrication? What are you making? Pesto, my dear. Party pesto. Every party pesto has to have some good lubrication. lubrication. <laughs> I'm afraid to even say it. Okay, I said it. There. So this is going to be absolutely delicious, amazing, cool. Tastes great. Mmm, amazing. I'm swearing off burgers, boy. I'm a big boy. And I'm eating raw. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His chain is marching.